The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Martin. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. This is Daryl Martin, and uh, let's check out and see what's going on with the market today. Market's a little bit nervous, up, down, up, down, going on with the Italian elections and everything else happening right now. We got the S&P down four points. We got NASDAQ up six. We got the Dow down 25, and we got the Russell down five points. Gold is up 17 points. With copper up about a third of a percent right now, and silver is up two percent on the day. Corn right now up a buck twenty-five, and soybeans down twenty-two points. Oil is up seventeen cents. We got natural gas, literally right now up three and a half percent. So natural gas back in its one to four percent swings. We got euro dollar down a mere eight pips. We got pound dollar only down seventeen after the downgrade. We got Aussie dollar right now down 29 with US yen up 5, US Canadian up 53, US franc up 2. And the dollar index right now showing strength across the board. And uh, so checking a few more things out and uh, looking at what all is going on here. Let's uh, see what's happening in the news. Okay, right, so we got the Italian elections, and uh, that's going to be real interesting just to see how the entire party plays out. But um, the whole election is happening right now, and uh, we got most of the results are already starting to come in. But uh, the exit polls have already been released, and uh, so we'll uh, talk a little bit more about that in the next break. But uh, that's starting to, to move the markets a little bit. Um, as far as this morning, uh, the British pound had the BBA mortgage approvals, which was lower than expected. And let's see here. What else? I'm trying to see. There's just not a whole lot going on today. We talked about this uh, last Friday, so today was sort of a low news day. Of course, the big thing being everybody's waiting to see what's going to happen with the whole uh, you know fiscal cliff. So where all the automatic spending cuts going in, and everybody's talking on both sides like it's really just going to happen. And now it's just going to be about a blame game. You don't really hear a lot of resolution talk. Uh, you just hear a lot of it's going to happen talk. So... Uh, we'll see, but it looks like it may just happen this time. Uh, you know, it's almost hard to believe after everything else they've done. But, uh, you know, with all the different things that have been going on. But, uh, you know, they may actually let it finally, uh, you know, they may take their own medicine. And, uh, of course, that's going to affect a lot of good people, too, which is not cool. It would be nicer if they'd actually put some things together that help grow the economy. And, uh, you know, not just things that are, you know, trying to punish the economy. And uh, do I think we need to cut expenses? Yes. Do I think doing it with a big hacksaw is a good idea? No. Uh, so, you know, but uh, I guess we'll find out what everybody thinks um, as all this stuff gets released. Also, the uh, HSB manufacturing, flash manufacturing PMI, that came out last night over in China. That came out worse than expected. We saw a little bit of a market sell-off from there before a rally this morning, and then it did a pullback and uh, filled in the gap. And uh, we'll go through and we'll do sort of a you know little analysis on each of the markets here in a little bit. Um, and let's see here for tomorrow. Really tonight, there's no major announcements um, that are tradable. And uh, but for tomorrow morning, um, you'll have the Bank of England uh, Governor King is going to be talking. So and uh, he'll be doing a uh, speech at the Japanese Bankers Association out in Tokyo. So that could depending upon what he says with everything that's going on with Britain, that could definitely have an impact on the markets. And then we have the inflation report hearings coming out of Britain at 5 a.m. And uh, we have CBI Realized Sales coming out of Britain. So quite a few Britain announcements coming out. Uh, that, would, of course, will lead to you know some decent volatility in the pound one way or the other, especially if they all line up, ideally. In other words, all good or all bad for the pound. And uh, either way, that will help uh, get some good volatility so you have a good you know potential strangle play right there. Looking on over a little bit further, here in the U.S., we're going to have a lot of reports coming on out. We're going to have, let's see, what, two reports coming out at 9, 1, 2, 3, 4 coming out at 10. And uh, so we're going to be releasing, looks like, uh, the CB Consumer Confidence Report. And we'll have the uh, federal uh, Bernanke. All right, we got Bernanke talking. And uh, I'm sort of a fan of Bernanke, not because I'm a fan of Bernanke, but Bernanke makes things move, and I like it when things move. 
And uh, so I especially like gold when Bernanke talks because it usually moves quite a bit. So, but he'll be uh, testifying in a semi-annual monetary policy report before the Senate. Uh, doubt there to be any um, big surprises, but at the same time, it's going to be his, you know, his current statements on questions that come out. So that'll be uh, nice to be able to see if there's anything there that we can really take advantage of. And uh, new home sales is also coming out. And uh, you know, if I look over at some of these different reports, let's see here, we can go in and look at, say, new home sales. And I'll check out uh, sort of a, the Olson scale, if you've never used that before. Let me bring that up for you. And you can go in here to olsonscale.com. It's a free site. It's basically, the idea is to measure a, a, a quake, okay? Sort of like, uh, you know, the um, scale that they use for measuring earthquakes. This scale measures the quake in the FX market based on any time of day on any Forex pair. And so you can go in, you can go to like the date that the report was last released and the time that it was last released, and you can see what currency pair moved the most. And so like right here, you can see the U.S. Canadian actually moved the most the uh, last time the new home sales came out. So actually 0.9, it was actually the biggest mover. And it actually has a tendency to move it to as high as 1.1. So it's had a pretty high movement. Now, U.S. Yen has also had a big movement. That's a little light blue area you can barely see right there. Um, that actually is the sort of the largest move that's expected. There's a little green bar. I'm going to get as zoomed in as I can on here so you can really see it. So that's actually the current. Uh, that was the number that actually came in. And it came in as high as, like right here, about 1.5. Over here, it's coming in about 1.2. The last time it came in at 0.9. And so you can see what, you know, basically pairs it's rocked the most. The pound has actually looks like it's had the biggest impact historically. However, um, not recently. So, you know, you could look at the different ones. Oh, it's huge impact right here on the euro dollar. It's actually had a massive impact historically, but the last time only 0.5. And so you can go through and you can actually pull up each one of those. And all you got to do whenever you're doing this is you go down and you can, uh, like I said, change the date and time to match any announcement you want, any time of day you want, and see what currency pairs are most active at that time of day. And, of course, at that specific time when that announcement came out. And so if I look at the time before that where these reports came out, then I see U.S. Yen also a big winner. U.S. Franc a big winner, New Zealand dollar. Euro dollar was huge. Look at that, 1.4 right there. So, and then I could go back and, you know, I usually pull up like, you know, four or five, maybe six of them. And I'll look at each one of them by date and I'll see basically, you know, which one, because you're going more for consistency than just the biggest move. Because the biggest move could be, well, that's great, but it did it once. But if you can get one that does it over and over and over again, then what we can find out is... You know, which one can we sort of, you know, ideally count on to be our big mover um, on a news announcement? And so, you know, if we go in and look at all of these, we can see that U.S. Yen has done pretty well most of the time. U.S. Canadians had a pretty big impact. Um, Euro dollar and U.S. Yen has had a couple small times that it hasn't moved a whole lot. And uh, it's like U.S. Canadian, it seems to be winning out actually over and over again. Even though U.S. Yen has had some big moves, the U.S. Canadian has a consistent impact of about 0.5 to 0.8. So it uh, looks like it's a little bit more consistent to me. Maybe Euro dollar. Let's see here. And uh, but it looks like to me, yeah, U.S. Canadian is probably your biggest bet on that trade for the for the ten o'clock trade. So if you want to do a strangle or a straddle on the spreads um, over on the Nadex exchange, then that would be the pair that you could actually focus on. Would be the ten a.m. U.S. Canadian pair. Um, and then, like I said, you could strangle or straddle. You'd want an expiration of at least eleven or twelve, or the end of the day at three o'clock. And um, if you don't know how to find the spreads, it's really easy. Um, if you haven't done so already, you can hop on over to our website at tfnn.com. Okay? And from there, there's a couple things you're going to want to do. One of those is you're going to go to Nadex. There's a link right here. Click on that. That'll take you to nadex.com. And under our product, they have a demo account. So you can just demo this out and try it out. Okay? Fill in your username, first name, last name, phone, and email address. Click apply for demo. And they'll send you a password that you can use right away. Uh, and then also you can go over here and uh, you can click on create account. It takes about five minutes to create a live account. And you go from start to fund. It's only $100 to fund a live account. No day trading restrictions like stocks. No um, things getting exercised to assign to you like options. Uh, no worry about delivery uh, like futures. So uh, cash settled at the second they expire. I mean, you get an email within you know a couple minutes at most. And um, it's settled out and the money's put right back in your account. And you can start trading it again. So hopefully, <laughs> if you're profitable, right? And um, so from there, now we also have some other things coming up. Uh, we're going to have a dynamic trading workshop. We just had a great one out in Denver. We had one out in Tampa before that. So we're going on over to the other side of the country. Going out to San Mateo, just south there, San Francisco. And uh, 
We're going to do a dynamic trading strategies workshop with me, Tommy O'Brien, talking about identifying the trade. We're going to have Dan Cook from Nadex, and uh, I'll be going into binaries and spreads and the deviation levels. I talk about those a whole lot on our show and how I use them. Whether you're a futures trader, a forex trader, or a Nadex trader, you're going to be able to benefit from this conference. Um, and if you're an ETF or a stock trader, you want to come here because you're going to figure out how you can actually get a lot more leverage with a lot less risk um, trading things like ETFs and you know stocks even. So um, now when I say stocks, you can't trade stocks on Nadex, but you can trade NASDAQ, which is moved by Apple. You can trade Google, which is moved by Apple. So basically, you trade NASDAQ, and in essence, that you know that one of the best trades I've done on Nadex actually was done trading NASDAQ based on the Google earnings announcement. So, and that was my entire trade. It was literally based just on the Google earnings announcement. So, um, definitely register for that. It's free if you're going to be in the area. Make sure you do register, submit. We're going to be giving away silver. We're going to be giving away books. We're going to be giving away subscriptions. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff. And again, it's free, sponsored by Nadex. You do have to register. So that way we have a seat reserved for you. We had the last one packed out pretty tight. And um, so you definitely do want to make sure that you do get that seat reserved. And um, just make sure you are going to be there because we will reserve that seat for you. Okay? So fill that in. Submit it. You'll get the confirmation email. And uh, we'll get you going. Now, after you've done that, the next step is go over here and go over to the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer. Okay? On the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer, uh, basically what happens is I'm going to teach you how to use binaries, how to use spreads, get access to the deviations, and get access to my live spread scanner and Nadex, uh, where you can go over here and as soon as you log in, what will happen is you just go to, say, box spread scanner. It'll open it up, and you can pick whatever market you want to trade. So let's say you want to trade the S&P. You, know, you can go in here and you can look for you know any trade, buy or sell side that you want, and it'll instantly do all the stuff for you, like how long, all the math, basically. So you don't have to do the math. So how much time is left till expiration? And then you can go, okay, well, how far does that have to go to be break even? What's the risk and what's the reward potential on the trade? And, uh, you know, now I understand this is max reward. This is one, and also, this is max risk, which is awesome. Okay, so if you go in and take this trade over here, you know, you're only risking 17 bucks on the trade. You can't lose more than $17 on the trade. So that's great. Uh, you know, if you did five of them, then that basically about risking less than $100 on an S&P e nature. That's like having a two-point stop loss, except for you can't be stopped out. You have until expiration to be right on the trade. And by using this, you can look and go, well, that's 20, that's 27. But look, this one actually has expires in 101 minutes. That one only expires in 41 minutes. So I may want to do that trade. And then you go down and see, is there one that's even better? You know, and you may or may not find one that's better that you're looking for, you know, if you're looking to buy or sell. And then when you're ready to actually place your trade, you just click buy. And it'll actually open the ticket for you in the Nadex platform. So you don't even have to go through and filter through the platform and figure out what you want to do. And, uh, you know, Nadex is an awesome way to trade. I'll talk about one of the trades I did this morning. And uh, extremely low risk and uh, went off really, really well. We'll talk about it and how we set it up. Be right back after this break. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market, something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, right now we're just checking out a few different things, looking at where everything is at. One of the trades that I did uh, this morning... Uh, I was going on and just looking at the markets. I was actually taking the Russell's lead. The Russell was starting to move down, and uh, the NASDAQ was really fighting it. The S&P uh, was sort of hesitating in the process, and even the Dow was hesitating. And so I was waiting on the NASDAQ to break down. And um, so what I did was I basically waited on the NASDAQ to actually decide to give in a little bit. And uh, we'll pull it up over here. I'll sort of show you what I was talking about. And right here from this morning... So we got, the, see, the S&P was just oscillating right here. Okay, so I'm waiting. And not so much my classic gap fill trade, because uh, this really didn't line up with the pattern that I like to use on my gap fill trades. Um, so I wasn't so much playing the gap fill. And you got the Russell, I mean, it was just, it opened up just, like, it's just pushing down, like, hard. And I'm like, okay, so we want to probably follow the lead on that one. And um, the NASDAQ was just taking its sweet time, but it finally decided to, you know, break over there. And so what I did was I hopped on over to Nadex. And uh, put on some trades. And let's see here. I'll bring this up. And let's see if I can bring up the uh, order history just to show you. Helps explain if I get the exact prices here. And what I did was I sold the 1515.5 11 o'clock expiration binary over on Nadex. And the reason I sold that is basically right where settlement was, 1515.5. So it's also sort of like a gap, basically, I like got gap fill trade. 
very reasonable price. And as you can see, it got there. It actually did hesitate there for you know about an hour, uh, a little over an hour, that it just hung out in that area, just up and down on that price. So I went over there and I sold that. I actually got in. I got filled at a uh, let's see here, ninety three fifty, and I did twenty contracts. One of the cool things you can see over on Nadex is when you do. It's 90 cents a contract, but if you do more than 10, it's nine bucks cap. So that means there's only nine dollars um, for me to do the trade uh, for my fees. Okay, so my total fees on all 20 contracts combined was only you know nine bucks. But I go in and I sold it for 93.50, so 93.5, and then I bought it back for 57. Let's go right when it hit that price, and so that gave me a profit of 36 dollars and 50 cents on the trade. May not sound big, okay. 36 bucks, uh, but I mean, think about it. If I sold it for 93.50, that means 100 minus 93.5. The reason I do that is the maximum value is 100. So the most I could lose on the trade is $6.50. Okay? So 6 bucks and 50 cents was my max risk. I made 36.50. So 36.5 divided by 6.5. So it's a 560% return on the trade. And if we look at the time that I got filled on each one of these, right here, let's see if it'll tell me. At some point, it tells me the time somewhere. Oh, there it is. Okay, so yeah, I got in, I got filled at basically 10.30 and got out at 11. So in 30 minutes, uh, we're making, let's see, I submitted it. Oh, wait a minute, it was filled. Okay, so I want to make sure I give you the right price. The 93.50 was filled at 9.30. And uh, so I got filled at 9.30. And then I bought this one back at 10.30. Okay, so basically an hour, uh, a little less than an hour, was able to go in and make uh, you know about 700 bucks on the trade and a little bit more than that uh, with a very low risk, only risking 6 bucks and 50 cents on the trade. And you know I don't know where else you can do that, okay? But, I mean, 6.50 times you know, 20, you know, my risk is 130 plus you know, 9 bucks. So let's just say the whole thing lost, plus 9 bucks of it won, so $148.00. Um, on the trade was my total, you know, you could say cost. And then, you know, I netted, like I said, 36.50 times 7. And then we just subtract the fees. So I made 237.50 on the trade. Um, wait a minute, here, I'll do that one more time. 36.5 times 20. Okay, there we go. Minus the fees. So I made 7.12 and, uh, on the trade. So, I mean, not a bad trade at all. And, uh, again, very low risk. And a lot of people go, well, that just looks like, you know, gambling to me or, you know, whatever. Well, you know what? Everything involving financial risk is gambling if you don't have risk management and a plan and a reason and a system for putting it together. Uh, if gambling was always gambling, there wouldn't be casinos because the casinos would be gambling, too. If gambling was always gambling, then you wouldn't have people that win the World Series of Poker year after year after year after year after year. There, it's not chance that they just happen to win year after year after year. So they have risk management, they have statistics, they know what they're doing, they have a system put in place. They know how to play you know, the game, I guess you could call it. Um, but they, they know how to manage their money. And so you want to manage your risk, you want to have an actual plan, you want to be consistent in that plan. And uh, one of those things is we don't hold until expiration when we're doing an out of the money binary, basically one that has less than $50 risk. And uh, so we are trading the binary, not betting the binary. And uh, it's a totally different style of trading, and uh, but has some pretty cool uh, ways to trade in it. So very stress-free because you're not freaking out because your risk is limited. Stay right there. We'll be right back after this break. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
just recently on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF, and over the same two trading days, Market Insight subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, just going to the S&P, basically went in. What we did right there was we sold air and uh, the binary right here, 15, 15.5. We bought it at 57 right before it got there and actually set the take profit the second we got in. So we got in and we set a take profit within seconds. And we just let it work its way until it finally came down, filled it, left it alone. Could we have made more money? Yes. Could you have made more money in most trades? Well, probably, maybe. Um, if you stayed in at the right time and didn't get out at the wrong time, who cares? So, you know, you're up, I mean, with that one trade, we're talking, you know, 500% return. Who cares? So, manager risk, trade to trade well. My goal was, hey, this is my target. This is where I'm getting out. And that's where I get out of the trade. And uh, that's one thing I definitely urge you to do is have your profit management plan, your risk management plan in place before you ever hit a button. Okay? Um, it'll save you a lot of heartache. So, now let's go over here and we'll go through and uh, we'll check out some of the deviation levels, where they went for the day. And you see right here, the Russell, despite its strong run up, was not able to hit the 0.5 deviation. Came on back down, hit that settlement pretty hard, right down to 0.5. And it looks like it's working on pushing on down to a 0.7 level. Um, and if we go look at a couple of the other uh, major indices right here, we got the S&P. It uh, did have that stronger rally this morning. That's why I was hesitant to hop in on it right away. Moved on up to 0.5, moved on up to 0.7. And then pulled on back down to settlement. Like I said, hung out there for a while where it finally broke down, hit the negative 
and uh, it looks like it's also within the, you know a few ticks shy of the negative 0.7 deviation itself. And uh, so we'll go on down. Let's check out the Dow. Dow moved up, uh, same, 0 0.7, 0 0.5, almost into 0.7. So all the indices sort of acting in lockstep. Just the Russell's been the one that's a little bit off. And then let's check out the NASDAQ. Sometimes it has its own drama. It actually hit a 0.1, actually a 1 deviation. It moved up a full deviation this morning, and that's why I was waiting on it to break. Like, it was the, if the NASDAQ doesn't give, I don't think the Dow and S&P are going to give. And uh, But I want to follow the Russell. So <laughs> the Russell was my leading index. And, uh, but the NASDAQ was my lagging index, and until the lagging index really gave in, then I'm like, all right, now I can hop in with the S&P, oh, and I can hop in you know, with the Dow. You could hop in with the NASDAQ as well, but I figured the S&P would hit, get down there, and uh, the Dow would actually move further. I figured those two would move further negatively if um, the NASDAQ didn't do it. And like I said, they actually moved down to 0 0.5. The NASDAQ basically just hit its uh, settlement price yesterday. It filled that gap in before pulling on back up, and it's just hanging out right there at the settlement price. Now, going on over, looking at a few other markets, we'll check out our gold right here. And uh, we can see gold moved up. Perfect right there. Hit a deviation. Let you put in your stop right there. Remember, we put our stop in on the deviations. We use 10-minute bars. And what we like to do is um, have that stop being right on the bar that actually closed above it. And uh, then, you know, so the stop gets hit. You're looking for reversal. You get your reversal short. You're going on down. This bar closes below it, you tighten your stop, and then you get kicked out right about there, and it just hangs out, and now it's doing a whole lot of nothing. So you had to, some good trades on the up and the downside there on gold. We'll get on over and check it out. Silver, on silver right here, uh, you can see it went up one deviation, and then it decided to keep going on a terror move on up to 1.5. And uh, so it closed right above that level right here, finally got knocked out of that trade, and uh, then we were able to you know take advantage of it as well. Um, and let's see here, what do we got? Uh, moved on down to one, and now it's just sort of hanging out. So you can see these deviations. I don't know if they serve as sort of a support resistance, because you can see it had to br it broke through, but then it came back down to it, and now it's a resistance level. Came up to this as that now a or support level. Came to this as a resistance level, and now it dropped on back down, and it's now looking at uh, one as a support level that it's having to break through before it can actually go further on down. So it can really help. And I mean, you can see this over and over again. You can see right here, it moves up to 0.7. That's resistance. It's moving back down. It has a little bit of a support area right here. Keeps trying to work through it. Finally is able to push through. So it's great for scalping, like right in these areas especially. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll check out copper. Let's see here. I know we're going to be rolling over pretty soon on some of these. I may need to update them already. Uh, but this week there will be several rollovers going on. The copper moved on up 0 0.5, 0 0.7. Really a lot of zigzag going on. Pretty hard to trade copper this morning. And, uh, you know, best time to trade, I like to trade coppers whenever they have, like, uh, new home permits and things like that. So whenever they're going to start building, basically construction-based um, reports, they're going to require copper to, you know, fulfill those orders. That's a good time to, you know, be looking at copper on those days. And then uh, we'll go over and check out our ags. And right here on corn, we got corn moving down all the way down to negative 2 Negative two deviations. I mean, just a massive, massive move. And uh, before it pulls on back up, and uh, like I said, just some pretty sweet deviations over here on corn. And uh, we'll go over and check out soybeans as well. Soybeans also moving quite a bit more uh, than we expected for today based on just the implied volatility that was built into the options. Uh, we can also check out some of our currency pairs. we got the Aussie dollar. And on the Aussie dollar here, it moved on down. It did its normal thing. We've done it to one deviation. Pulled all the way back up to settlement, and then retraced back down. Looks like it might be one to hit that one deviation, might bounce off of it. We'll see. We do have a seasonally bullish uh, cycle on the Aussie today. We'll see how it ends up before the day's over. And uh, we'll go on over to pound dollar. Pull that one on up. Pound dollar. Uh, let's see here. Let me reload this data on this one. There we go. And uh, we can see it uh, was already down, you know, at this negative one deviation. Uh, a little bit more than that overnight. I just have the uh, regular trading hours built in right here right now. Pulled on back up to settlement and just been oscillating. But a lot, of, a whole lot of gap fills going on one way or the other in most of the markets. So it was really a sort of like just a gap fill day. Uh, looking over at Euro dollar, flew on up to one deviation, fell all the way back down, down at 0.5, working on 0.7. And uh, just some just some drastic, awesome moves in currency. And, uh, I mean, there's not a lot of news, but just the Italian stuff going on and the all the uh, worries about the fiscal cliff and 
the big thing, of course, being Britain being downgraded last Friday. Um, so from you know Triple A to what Double A plus or whatever. So uh, due to their debt load, and uh, it's like welcome to the club. So <laughs> um, looking on over at the U.S. Canadian, and uh, what you can see right here is it uh, it's really just moved on up all day. So it's up one and then moving on towards uh, one point five right now. And um, so pretty strong move right there. We have a stop right here. So still in on the long side on the U.S. Canadian. And then going on over to the U.S. Franc. And on the U.S. Franc trade, uh, let's see here. We had to move down almost to the tick to a deviation. Perfect move right there. And uh, you at least would have had a stop right here. Turns around, goes back. You get a long signal. You can write it all the way back up. Not only to settlement. But it's uh you know moving like it you know it might want to move up to half a deviation that'd be a pretty big down and up move for the U.S. franc in a single day. But we've had just some perfect perfect moves. And again, just check out how these deviations help you over and over see where the support resistance levels are going to be and where you want to tighten your stops. So a huge profit management tool uh, because you know you always have these expectations it's going to go to the moon. But this tells you in reality, basically less than 30% of the time do we really expect it to break out of a one deviation move. And we're going over, we can check out the U.S. Yen. On the U.S. Yen, moved on down here. We'll go on. It, uh, after that big move it had up, then it started moving on back down and filled in the gap all the way back down to settlement. And let's see, U.S. Franc, U.S. Yen, U.S. Canadian, pound dollar, euro dollar. That's basically the main currency pairs I like to watch myself. And, uh, you know, you can look at these also, you know, the cross currencies like pound yen, euro yen. Uh, and the futures markets. We also now understand we have all these deviation levels built into the site, so you can get access to them. They update every day, uh, right here at 7:15 Eastern time, and the risk would go till 7:15 Eastern time the following day. And uh, so for Monday they'll update at 7:15 on Sunday, and then Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. So basically Sunday through Thursday they're updating for the uh, following day. And we put in here, you know, here's the settlement price of the previous day. Here's the deviation level right here. Okay. And this is what a full deviation is. This is what a half deviation is. So we have in the Nadex markets, which tell you what Nadex uh, contracts being followed. And then we also have down here, we have the Forex. And then down here, we have the front and back month on the futures contracts. So that way you can actually follow through and look at the front and back month. So gold will be dropping off pretty soon here. And uh, we'll be, you know, we already have the April one up. So the new one will be uh, popping up pretty soon. And, uh, but, and then we even have the Forex futures markets. So let's say you're trading the yen over on the CME. Then we have the actual, you know, yen uh, deviations as well. So a lot of cool stuff that you can take advantage of. And uh, right there. So uh, that's one of the things that I definitely tell people, you know, they, they're usually missing in their trading, which is they're missing uh, taking advantage of statistics. They use fundamentals, you know, like news announcements. And they use technicals, which is awesome. I mean, you got to follow the charts at the end of the day. It's what the charts say, the price and volume. Uh, but... You also need to know how far you expect it to move, especially if you're day trading. You know, day trading, that's probably one of the most important things you need to know, uh, simply because, I mean, there's a limited amount of movement that's going to happen in a single day on most days. And knowing what that limited expectation is based on an objective black and white, literally black and white number, can be incredibly valuable in giving you an objective opinion of how far the market will move. At what point will it pause and hesitate? If it keeps going down, where could it go next? If it goes back up, where will it go to? So you could apply this to any trading strategy that you're using with the deviation levels. So I don't care what your strategy is. If it's an intraday style strategy, then you can use this. Whether you're a scalper, whether you like to go for swing trades or trend trades during the day, whether you like to play reversals, you know, what I don't care if you're using Fibonacci's or, you know, you're doing the Gartley, you know, Tiger Gartley butterflies or, you know, what your strategy is. This can be put right on top of your screen and give you very accurate levels. And again, it's not pivot levels. It's not, you know, historical deviations. It's not standard deviation. It's not ATR. It is based on the implied volatility, the expected movement pricing built into the option. So it's a survey where people would put their money where their mouth is. And so where does everybody as a whole, the hedge funds and the, the little guys and the big guys and everybody, where are they putting their money on how far the market's going to move? And so we take that number of uh, the market expectation of movement out of the options, out of 16 different options, we put them all together, make our own index, and tie it into a deviation formula and uh, for an intraday move. And that's where these levels come from. And uh, again, expecting most of the movement on most days to stay with inside one deviation. 
And so that lets you, if you're trading futures or forks, know where to like be setting profit, looking for potential reversals, doing scout trades, things like that. If you're trading Nadex, it lets you know where to pick your strikes. Um, one of the things I talked about earlier on the scanner is this going to tell you maximum profit. Okay, so like right here, we have maximum reward on this trade. Okay, maximum is great, but you also need to have a realistic, realistic reward. How far do you expect it to move? You may not expect it to move 30 points today. Okay, one deviation on the S&P today is, I want to say, like, what, 13 points from what we were just looking at over here. So we really don't expect to move bigger than 13 points, up, down, or up and down on the, on the S&P. So uh, with that in mind, then, okay, well, where are we at in that move of 13 points already? So, all right, so 13 points would be about 130 bucks. You know, well, that's great on this trade. But we go down here, and you have a trade that could make $391. And so that looks really appealing. But that also means it's going to move like 391 pips, okay? So which would mean basically, you know, 39 points. Uh, be a very, very large move. So we don't necessarily expect that big of a move. So when you're looking at your risk to your reward ratio, don't just look at your max reward to risk ratio. Look at your realistic reward to risk ratio. So I think I can make eight points on this trade. Okay, well that's, now that gives me, okay, I can make $80 on a $10 or $20 risk. And also, uh, if I get to look at break even distance, you know, like this will say it only has to move 0.9 to be break even. It has to move two points to be break even. It has to move, you know, one point to be break even. Well, how far do I expect it to move? Because this one has to move 15 points. <laughs> so if I only expect it to move like 13 points, then 15 points isn't going to do me a whole lot of good because I'm never going to get the break even. I don't care if the risk is only five bucks. And so many traders go in and they choose these trades based on risk. Like, man, five dollars, I like that trade. Yeah, but the market, the probability of it getting there is like none, zero. So why would you choose that? Yes, it could work. And yes, you could make a lot of money. But do you understand on this trade that it had to move like 15 points for you just to get your money back? Not to make anything, just to get it back. So you got your time risk. Like, how long do you have to be right? You have your break-even distance risk. How far does it have to be before you just get your money back? You have your dollars at risk. Okay, so the actual dollars you're putting at risk. And you got to put all that together. And it's not that hard. It's like, how much time do I want? Well, if I want maximum time, then I, you know, I just want the ones that have you know, 146 minutes. So I can go up here and say, you know what? I want to have at least a couple hours till expiration. It'll drop all those off. Well, there's my time risk resolved, okay? Well, now that I have that resolved... Well, these have to move three points. That would have to move one and a half points. This have to move 16 and 16. So let's get rid of those two big moving trades. And now we just have a three and a one and a half point move requirement. That's a whole lot better. Okay, now what's my risk? 26 points, $57. Let's see, $210 profit, $390 profit. So now we're actually getting in, you know, to some better trades there that have a lot of potential for us and don't have to move near as far um, on the trades here. So right there, if we get rid of those, then... We've narrowed it down, and now we can go, okay, out of these two, which one's the best trade? Well, this one has to move a couple more points, but the other one's going to risk 20 more dollars. So this probably actually may be the better trade. Only has to move a few points, only risking 26 bucks, and um, has a great potential. So, And actually has the best reward to risk potential um, out of all the options that are decent. I mean, yeah, this may have a 50 to 1 reward to risk potential, but you know, it has to move 15 points to be break even. And it's not because anybody's trying to mess you over. It's just because it's out of the money. So let me show you right here. We got the live price, and but here's where the floor is. So it has to get inside the spread to make money. We want to be in the spread already. We're very close to it. All right, stay right there. We'll be right back after this break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. Join David White as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, we're just going through a few different things. We're checking out the spreads. We're talking about how you want to make sure you're looking at realistic expectations on the market, how far you think the market's going to move, um, and not how far you think the market's going to move, but how far the market says the market's going to move. So it really is important to uh, take advantage of having statistics on your side so that way you're having you know the fundamentals knowing when the market will move from news, and having you know technicals following the market and doing what the market says the market is going to do, not having the opinion, but when the market tell you what it's doing, but then also having statistics to tell you how far the market is going to go. And then seasonals can help because they give you a heads up. And seasonals are not something you simply trade, but you do use them for a heads up. You combine them with technical analysis um, in order to be able to trade them. So it's more for the heads up factor of um, you know this is how the market works. And this is usually when it goes up or usually when it goes down. So with all that in mind, let's go ahead now and check out, and I'll uh, leave the deviations up there for you if you want to check out a few of them right here. Um, but with all that in uh, mind for the day, let's go over and look at uh, what we have left on the news for the rest of the week. What's coming up? So we talked about tomorrow we have new home sales. We got Bernanke. We talked about looking at the U.S. Canadian um, for that. And uh, 
Let's see here. What do we have that night that might be... Let's see, got some construction work coming out of Australia, quarter over quarter. Not a heavy impact, more of a medium impact report, so I wouldn't be looking for just a massive move on it. Um, and then going over into the morning on Wednesday, we're going to have um, second estimates on the quarter over quarter uh, GDP. So that'll be a pretty high impact report, 4.30 a.m. And then we're going to go over into core durable goods here in the U.S. at 8.30. And we'll wrap it on down to the Bernanke is going to talk again. So great, more movement from Bernanke. So uh, we could be looking <laughs> at that. We'll also have pending home sales coming out at the same time. So between that and Bernanke talking, uh, we can use both of those to uh, trade something like gold probably. Um, and then going in and looking at, uh, let's see, and then Draghi is going to grace with this present. So all the big boys want to step out and talk on Wednesday at 1230. And at 1030, right before that, we'll have the crude oil inventories you can take advantage of. And then going on into the evening, you will have uh, the private capital expenditures out of Australia. That is a heavy impact report at 730. So that gives you a Wednesday evening report you can trade over on the Aussie. And then looking over Thursday, we're going to have unemployment claims in the morning. Unemployment, gold right now is usually one of the big markets to trade um, on that. Also, USD CAD can be a pretty big impacted uh, currency on unemployment claims. So right here in the U.S., 830 a.m., and then we go on down and look at what else do we have later in the day. There's be a bunch of medium impact reports happening throughout the day. You have natural gas storage. So not so much an FX mover, but definitely a um, natural gas mover. So you can play strangles and straddles on natural gas over on Nadex. And then there'll be some, uh, some medium impact reports coming out that evening on the yen. And uh, manufacturing PMI coming out of China. That's more just going to be an overall market impact, not something you necessarily play directly. And then scrolling on into Friday to wrap things up, we're going to have, let's see, just a variety of retail sales and PMI reports. A lot of news just coming out of Europe, period. Like a lot of British news, a lot of Europe news. So expect some good, strong moves overnight and into about 11 or 12 o'clock, um, you know, Eastern time, like all the way through to about that time before things start slowing down on Friday. And uh, we'll also have a big uh, Canadian. We're going to have the GDP coming out of Canada, along with a whole bunch of U.S. reports. I mean, like a dozen coming out within an hour and a half. So definitely a U.S.-Canadian trade on Friday morning that you can take advantage of. And uh, so there's done a lot to take advantage of this week. So if we took down a few of those notes, so you can go in and trade them, get a demo account on Nadex, and register on our website. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. Stay tuned. we got another great show coming up for you right after this.